Doreen Reid Nakamara was born near the Warburton Ranges in remote Western Australia in the mid-1950s. She has been honing her artistic skills over the last decade, initially assisting her late husband with his painting, before emerging as an artist in her own right in the late 1990s. Nakamara's most recent works mix her optically challenging representations of important ancestral sites with which she is affiliated with a stunning sense of minimalist abstraction. someone not just painting a story or appropriating an image, is someone pulling something straight from their spine and going splat and spitting it onto a canvas straight from inside somewhere. I'm doing my canvas. I'm working. This one here I'm doing. Ladies was doing this dream for ladies. She has pictured a canvas and how it will be long before it's actually put onto canvas. Uh, this image or map or code is well inside her body. And so when she goes to make a canvas, there's no hesitation, no double guessing, no, oh, should I start here or should I start here or does this go here? It comes straight from inside, it's straight from inside onto the canvas. This bully here, this rock, that's for woman. That's dream. They was doing dream, body for man, for mangari, for dagger. That's called gumbrad. Pretty much with, with all of the artists from Kintour and Kiwikura, there's absolutely no hesitation. Uh, people just approach the canvas, um, it just kind of falls out and, you know, it doesn't work every time for everyone, but, you know, the, the, the really, truly great artists in the group, and there's many of them, you know, they just seem to nail it each time and it's really, it's quite unreal from our perspective, who, you know, charged with the responsibility of um, promoting and exhibiting, curating the shows and trying to place works in places like the National Gallery to assume that each time someone sits down and does a painting like that, that they're going to produce another masterpiece, you know, and, and you kind of you sort of, yeah, you shouldn't expect it, but you do, because people are just so consistent. Why do you use those colours? I done that green, cream one and like a brownish and orange colour. You are? Dark and light. You are? 
Your paint, your colours. Your colours. You are. So where we were yesterday at Nami. We were just going for a little dog and I'm telling story about this woman. So I was you making of it for men. You are. Is that part of that same story? That yeah. Same, right. Same. They came from... Marapinti. You are, those Min Majuda travelled from Marapinti to Nami? Yeah, from Marapinti to Nami and they travelled to West. To West. Wero. Wero next. What else is there? Mima Puli, sad and sad of group. Minma and Puli? Mima sitting there and Puli. Minma sitting in that Puli. Minma Juda, you are? So lots of ladies sitting down around you those rocks. All the nangalas. All the nangalas. Mm. You are. Yes, nangala was dream. What do they do when they're sitting down they there? They were sitting in a mimago business. Ah, oh, ladies' business, eh? Hey? I think it's about a whole range of different things. Um, first and probably foremost is is cultural and storytelling and passing on of that knowledge and sharing that knowledge. So the dreaming or the jukapa she paints, the Karnaputta story that she paints would be first and foremost in the work. Um, second to that though would be financial aspects, a source of a, a real meaningful income. The story behind the painting, it's a um, representation of a site near Kiwikura which is a very significant one to the women. Um, there's various associated stories that go along with that site. You don't see that in the painting. What Doreen paints is, you know, it's a more abstract interpretation of that site and those events. It's very, very stripped back. It's, it's sand hills and it's um, the rocky outcrops and the you know these lines, parallel lines standing up, which are um, you know hugely optical. Um, people really kind of stand back from them and um, take their time absorbing them. But it, that doesn't take anything away from the, the significance of that her relationship with that site. It's that's it. That's her site. That's what she's painting. The story about that site is this. She's chosen to represent that site like this. So did you did you always paint that kind of Buddha or did you ever paint down south? Yeah, I always make a kind of Buddha. You are. Same that difference. You are. Same. And did you always paint like this style? Yeah. Fine I've lines, got... fine dotting? Yeah, little touch. You are? Lines. You are? Same that... So that's your style, hey? Yeah. From stories that have been passed on through countless generations that have just continued along this verbal history. So there's no written text about it, there's no archives storing this information, there are no libraries where you can go and look it up. Uh, so uh, over time from hearing these stories that it's all stored inside. It's uh, almost as if each story is stored on a different rib or a different vertebrate and it, as you sort of travel down it's similar. My sort of analogy is you know you can you could touch a different part of the spine and and you know that would evoke a different place and a different story. You know, it's, the, it's an internal map. Finding all this Woman stream all this. I started here as a mummy painting, putting, putting in the canvas, all this.